Hi everyone. So what we're going to have a look at now is applying what we just did in the first part of this practical. So we learned about basic shapes with the circle, the rectangle and the other shapes. So we just want to take that kind of basic concept and just show how it would apply in a real context. So what we're going to do is have a look at developing a very simple magazine cover. So we say we were tasked with kind of coming up with a cover for Vogue and if we were given a photo from a photo shoot and just to add the title text and then another layer with some text on it. So what I've done is I've just done a search online for royalty free images. So you just have to be careful when you're using images in a project or in a publication that there's not royalties on them because if you use one that you know isn't uh, royalty free, you might owe somebody some money uh, or you could get into a little spot of bother about it. So a quick search will show you some stock photos that are free for public use. So just be careful with that. Uh, and even using the word Vogue here, I'm sure I'm breaking some kind of copyright law. But just for the sake of this example, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll take a chance. So all the shapes are available on Moodle. And what I've done here is I've combined them all together to show the solution. So our original picture, we should open up the picture of our model which will look like this. So what we need to do is to put the text behind her or a part of her head and then just add some text in front of her. So what we're going to have here is a few layers. Now I've made things easy for us. I've duplicated the mod model. Um, I'll show you how to do this in a later practical. So what I've done is I've cut out kind of around her head down to her elbow and over to her other elbow and back up again. So that's in this file in here. So I've purposely put this kind of green background behind her just to make things easy. And I've also made the Vogue text available. So we're just going to combine them and we can see how quickly we can do this now using the layers concept. And remember, when you're pasting these, you must paste as a layer. That will probably be the reason it doesn't work for you if there's any errors or you're, you know, it's not turning out the way it should. So if we go back to our model, the first thing that we want to do is to copy in the Vogue title. So we're going to copy and paste it as a layer over here. So here's the Vogue title. So I go up to select all, just to make sure the entire image is selected. Edit and copy, or control and C. Switch back to our model. And then we go to edit and paste as a new layer. So remember, all was do this. So there's our title text. So we can see down here on the right hand side that we now have two layers. So remember, if your layers window isn't appearing, Control and L will bring it back up for you. Or it's in here in Windows and Dockable Dialogs. And you'll see there's your tools. So that's all the features over on the left. And there's your layers. So using the Move tool, I'll just click somewhere on the text or the image itself. And we'll move it to, we'll say we want to put it here someplace. So it's currently on top of the model's head. So we want to fix that. So with our duplicate model, so I've cut this out from the original. So I've put it on a green background. So a quick way to grab her image is to, remember the color select tool we looked at in the last part of the practical. I'm gonna select the green color. So that's picked everything except the model. So this is why people use green screens in production and in animation and in movies and CGI, because it's very easy to remove. So I've selected it and here's the trick. I go up to select and then we pick invert. So what that says is pick everything except the green screen or the green background. So now it's switched and now the model is selected. So edit and copy back to our workspace. And now we go to edit and paste as new layer. So there she is. So we can drag her into the correct place. So I'm just gonna zoom in here so I can see but somewhere around there. Now you can nudge it. If you find that it's out slightly, you can use the arrow keys and that will move your image one or two pixels. So I think I may need to move mine slightly. So I think that's about right. Now, when you copy and paste uh, some layers like this from GIMP, sometimes you get this little error. So see the way there is some lines appearing around our model. So we're just going to erase those. So I just make sure that I have the correct model. Uh, so we get, can actually see there, look, if I switch off 
the second layer, we can see it's out slightly. So we just need to move it up a nudge. And then we can check again. Oh, it still needs to go up another pixel or two. And one more, that'll do. Okay, so we just want to remove these lines here. So I just make sure I have the right layer selected. And now I'm going to use the eraser tool. So see it here? Here's the eraser. I'm just going to make sure it's a good size. So I'm just going to turn up the size to about, let's just check that there, 103. Okay, that's perfect. And I'm just going to erase these lines. So this is just going to rub them out. So see them? They're gone. And I'll just check and see if there's any other lines. So I'm just going around the border here just to make sure and see it's taken out these lines for me. So see what happens if I take out the wrong part, it cuts out the model's head and the layer beneath it appears. So I think that will do. Okay, so we can zoom out now and we can see, okay, it's starting to take shape. So now we've got these layers, we've got our model's head, we've got the text and we've got the background image. So remember, whichever of these layers is on top will be the one that appears first. So if I was to move, the text layer to the top, it now appears in front of the model. So the last thing we want to do is just to add some text. So on the solution, if I just check it, it says we want to put summer starts here down in the bottom right hand corner. So we use the text tool here and we're going to put it down here someplace. So I'll say summer starts here. We can see that text is far too small, so this is actually a very big picture. So I'm just going to turn it up to maybe 200 just to see how big. So even that is too small. So we could probably go to 300. And I think it's italic. And it's aligned to the right hand side. So here's your alignment options over here. So if you have any font colors or issues with your font or colors, you just highlight it here. And if you need to change the color to something else, you can pick it, or you can change the style. If there's a better font, you can go ahead and use that. Or if you need to change the alignment or anything else, it's all over here. So I'm just going to zoom in down here, and I have a typo I can see here, so I should say start. So I'm just going to move that text over a little bit. So I click, just be careful that you click on the text itself, otherwise it will move the model's picture behind. So see the way the little pointer changes when it's over the text? I'm just going to move it to there and I'll just zoom out and just have a look at my solution and see how that compares. Okay, that's perfect. And we just want to put in this other text over here that's the same, so slightly smaller and some smaller text underneath that. And I'm just going to click over here. I'm going to say featuring. So that's so small, I can't even read it. And I'm just going to turn up the size of it to 200. And return. And there I go. Okay, so this bottom text is much too big. I'm just going to highlight that and turn down the size to maybe 100. So we'll just check our solution just to see what the alignment is like on it. So we should have two lines and a left line, Margot Robbie on Life in Hollywood. So break it in our capital O there and change the alignment. There we go. So we can move it then into or we want it to appear, so probably somewhere around there. So now we have completed it. So we can see here we've got all of our layers, so we can switch some off if we needed to. Uh, we can adjust the font. So remember, if I want to change this font down here, I come down and I click on it. I haven't picked the font too. I can decide which layers appear on front. Uh, if I wanted to change the opacity, make something slightly less visible, I can do it there. And the last thing we have to do is just to save our file. So if I go up to File and Save As, it will save it as an XCF. So that will be our GIMP file. So remember, we can come back and make any changes we want. But if we want to send it to somebody to have a look at, we need to export it. So we go to File and Export As. 
it's going to save as a JPEG already for me. So I would say onto my desktop, export. And it will ask me then what quality I want. I'll turn it up to 100 and export. So if you can upload one of those files to Moodle, I don't mind if it's the XCF or the JPEG. And if you have any questions, uh, we'll address them in class. Okay, so that's how magazine covers are made using GIMP and Photoshop. You would often use a piece of software like InDesign to do it, which manages it a little bit better, but it's a good way to show the principles of layers and how they can be applied in a kind of a real life context.